A very old Stuart S50 steam plant part 5, reassembling the engine to see if it works. In the last episode I made a new valve rod and assembled and fitted it. When I rotate the crankshaft, which moves the eccentric, which moves the valve rod, you can see why I need to make a new gland nut. I've decided that I need to run the engine to see how bad it runs. And in this clip I'm removing what's left of the gasket material on the steam chest cover and cleaning it up. I've temporarily refitted the steam chest cover to the valve chest using four of the very rusty original bolts. I will in the fullness of time be changing these. I've put plenty of oil in the steam chest and I'm moving the eccentric back and forth and as you can see, as I do that, the piston rod complete with the crosshead and connecting rod move back and forth also, but it's blowing very badly. The valve isn't seating properly, so I've removed the steam chest cover and I'm having a look inside. The drive block that I made is OK, maybe it could do with a little bit more clearance. The problem seems to be that the valve rod is a little bit tight as it goes down the middle of the valve. And a bit of work with a flat needle file should put this right. It looks like I'm filing at an angle. The camera angle doesn't help this, but I am filing at an angle, because the uprights seem to not be square. After attacking the valve with this needle file, everything should be fine when I put it back together. So there's only one way to find out, I'll put it back together. In this clip you can see that there's a good bit more play than there was originally. Because don't forget, slide valves have to float on the driving block, and you rely on the pressure of steam in the steam chest to keep the valve on the port face. I think this time round everything should be OK. I've refitted the eccentric rod to the valve rod clevis. I need to use some new bolts to hold the steam chest cover in place, but unfortunately the 7BA bolts that I'm going to use, which are normally used on Stuart models, don't fit in the holes. So I'm re-threading the holes 7BA. I would assume, as I mentioned in the last episode, that this engine was built in Germany, and therefore all the thread forms are metric. Needless to say, I'm re-threading this steam chest very carefully because I do not want to break off the tap. And thankfully the steam chest, like the cylinder, is made from gunmetal, and it's quite easy to tap. I'm using a plug tap for this so I can get right to the bottom of the holes, but I've got to be careful when I do get to the bottom of the hole not to keep turning the tap and snap it off. As a temporary measure, I'm going to fit the steam chest cover using these small 7BA dome head brass bolts, which I had lying about in a box of 7BA brass dome head bolts. It's now working much better. As I rotate the crankshaft, which rotates the eccentric and moves the valve rod, the piston rod, complete with the crosshead and the connecting rod, move back and forth very quickly, and there's far less air getting blown to exhaust. Some of the hissing you can hear isn't coming from the exhaust, it's coming from the inlet which is leaking around the steam chest cover. I thought it would be a good idea to fit the flywheel and give it a run. And I must admit, I was really surprised how well it ran. The flywheel is only pushed onto the end of the crankshaft, and the crankshaft is fairly true, or so it would appear. The air is leaking from my pipe, pushed onto the steam chest cover. I set the valve timing fairly accurately, and I'm surprised that it runs this well. There's plenty of power as well. And that's it from me for this episode. It's time to just let you watch the engine running. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.
please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.